everlasting life. But those that know it not, my son, are already condemned. Consider this world a prison and everybody is on death row and everybody is a dead man walking. Dead man walking! Just like the prison guard says to the inmate when he's going to be electrocuted, when he's going to the death chamber, the guard says, Dead man walking! You are a dead man walking without Christ Jesus. Dead! You are already condemned to death because you're disobedient to his word. You turned your back to God. God said, harden not your heart. I will give you a heart of flesh. I will take your stony heart and give you a heart of flesh so you can fully understand me. Amen? Yes, harden not your heart and repent. You know what repent means? To have a change of thought. To have a change of behavior. To have a change of thought. To change your mind. In other words, to change your mind about the wicked life you're living and accept Jesus and to walk in the light you have no more pain, no more sorrow. He'll give you a better tomorrow. He'll take away all your sin. He'll live within. Amen. He'll snatch you from that evil grasp of Satan. Open your eyes and show you the mistakes you've been making. He'll set you free. He'll give you the victory. And you can live with Jesus eternally. Amen. Amen. Whoa. Who doesn't want eternal life? And I'm not talking about a Peter Pan movie. This is real talk! Eternal life! This ain't no movie! Eternal life with Christ Jesus. Today could be the day of your salvation. Your salvation. Wherever you are right now, I want you to think to yourself, for a hot second. Where am I going to go when my time comes? It doesn't matter how old you are because life is not guaranteed no matter how old you are. Just because you're middle aged doesn't mean you're going to live a long time. Just because you're a teen doesn't guarantee you life for a long time. So ask yourself this question. Where am I going to go when my time comes? And if I were to die right now, right this minute, where would I go? And if it takes you more than half a millisecond to answer that question, then you need Jesus. If you don't know where you're going right away, I can answer that question in less than half a millisecond. Because I already know. Because with Jesus, you have a guaranteed life eternal plan. A guaranteed eternal insurance plan. Amen. Amen. Ask me where I'm going and I will tell you. I'm going to see my Savior Jesus face to face. I'm going to give him a warm embrace. And he's going to take me to his, with him to his heavenly place. You heard me? That's what I want to hear from somebody today. Hello. Amen. Amen. That's what I want to hear from somebody. I got one brother knows where he's going. How many people know where they're going? How many people know where they're going? How many people know that they need Jesus right now? Raise your hand. Come over and let us pray for you. You can come to Jesus today. And you can get baptized in the blood. By the blood. Amen? Amen. Nicodemus! Who was following Jesus and listening to Jesus in secret because he was a Pharisee. 
Yeah. Even a Hello. Pharisee can be saved. Amen? So he followed Jesus. And he invited Jesus to his house. And he was talking to Jesus. Yeah, you believe in Jesus? Yeah, okay. And he said to Jesus, Savior, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus answered him and said, To enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. To enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. So Nicodemus scratched his head and had a funny look on his face because he didn't know what that meant. And he said, How must I be born again? Must I, must I enter a second time into my mother's womb? And Jesus said, No! You must be born by the water and the Spirit! You must be born by the water and the Spirit. When you're in the water and you go down, like Jesus went down, He died for us, and when you go down, you die in your you die in the flesh. Your flesh is dead. You are not of the world. And when you come up, you come up like the Spirit of Jesus, because the Spirit of Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus will be in you. That's why he says you must be baptized. Amen. And you will be a new creation. You will be a new creation. The new is new and the old is old. Jesus said, I will take your sins and cast them into the depths of the sea and I will remember them no more. Just like the man that was in the courtroom sitting in front of the judge. And he was about to be condemned to death for all of his sins. For everything that he's done. And the judge raised the gavel. And he was about to bring the gavel down and sentence this man to death. But then, BAM! Jesus walked right through the door and he said, Free this man! I have paid for all of his sins. Free him! And the judge looked at his son and he said, then he looked up the man and said, not guilty. And he put the gavel down gently. Who wants to be declared not guilty today by the Lord God Almighty? Pardon not your heart. Repent. Come to Jesus. Let us pray for you. If you want to come to Jesus today, come on. And let us pray for you if you need prayer. Amen. Hey, man, come on down and let us pray for you. Come to Jesus, because our time is limited. You know, when you go to the store, and you see a sign that says, limited time only, 25% off. And then that, that, that caught your attention, right? 25% off, limited time only. You're like, mm, this is like a good deal right here. This is a good deal. Well, Jesus is giving you a limited time only for salvation. Limited time only. Free. My favorite word, free. I love free. Anything that's free, give it to me. <laughs> yes, eternal salvation is free. It's given to us by the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus on that old rugged tree where he died for you and for me. Amen? Amen. So why would you refuse the salvation 
and you better face the defamation of this wicked nation through God's proclamation that we are all in dire temptation and this world is coming to a dire eradication because you refuse the salvation to walk with Jesus in justification and you take you with him to his heavenly habitation. Huh? Am I right about it? Woo! Yeah, I think I just said a mouthful. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let my sister in Christ, Sister Joe, where is she? Fire lady! Fire lady! Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay, she's over there setting fire to that push, huh? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good to me. I am so happy to be alive in the land of the living that I can say thank you Jesus for dying on the cross for me way back at Calvary. When I was down in sin, grace came and do much more. Today I'm going to tell you this is the day that the Lord has made and we must rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody can raise their hand and say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Somebody raise their hands and say, Hallelujah! Let us praise God today. Hallelujah! We serve a sovereign God today. A God that loved the whole world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him shall not perish. Do you understand the word and the meaning? God loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son. And His name is Jesus Christ. And it said to him, you shall not perish, you will not perish, you will not die, you will not suffer. Or if you only come back to him, he promised you that. So many people want to love other people and, first, and reject the true and living God. But one day, we all have to go up to the valley of death. We all must go up to the valley of death. One day, we might be on the bed sleeping. We might be somewhere eating and drinking. We might be debating something. And when death calls you, you must go. What did I say? You will tell death, you're not going? Well, that's one thing, one thing that you cannot tell you don't ready to go. Death. There has no respecter of no one. He don't care if you're not married. He don't care if you was having the best of your time. He don't care. If you want the Holy Ghost faith, whatever size, when the number calls, you must leave planet Earth. Your time is finished. Your time is finished and you must leave. But after the moment you leave this place, where would you spend your eternity? Where would you spend your eternity because you did not have a relationship with God while you were here on earth? You were enjoying the gift of life. You were enjoying the money, the prosperity, the woman and the man. You were enjoying yourself. And death came as a thief in the night. And he takes you home. Where would you spend your eternity? 
And I'm serious today. If you see not have a relationship with God, where would you spend that eternity? God give us that gift. Jesus Christ is the 